Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about regression, and in particular, regression using categorical explanatory variables. This video will focus on binary categorical explanatory variables, that is, variables that have only two possible levels, and in the next video, we'll talk about situations with categorical variables that have more than two levels. As usual, down below, there is a PDF version of these slides, and up above, there'll be a link to a playlist all about regression. All right, so just as a reminder, our regression model can be written like this. That is, we have a response variable y that's independent, normally distributed, with a mean that's beta naught plus beta one times an explanatory variable xi, and a constant variance sigma squared. And so now the question is, how do we work with this when xi is not even a number, right? So in our previous videos, we were talking about having xi be continuous, that is, it's a number, and we could look at nice scatter plots of the response, sorry, response versus the explanatory variable, but now we're gonna be considering situations where x is actually a categorical variable. And how can we still use the mechanisms of regression models in that context? And so the way that we're gonna do it is like this. We're going to say that we have an explanatory variable and for the moment it will be binary. In a future video, it will be more than two levels. And we're going to suppose that this has two arbitrarily named levels, A and B. What we're gonna do is we're gonna construct a numeric uh, explanatory variable, Xi, from this categorical explanatory variable. And the way that we're gonna do that is through what's called an indicator function. So in this function, I think it's indicated right here, within the parentheses, there's always some statement. And that statement, uh, if it's true, then that indicator function will be a one, and the uh, if it's not true, then it will be a zero. So this is one of those sort of crazy, stupid functions uh, that just gets us to be able to do something. It can only be one and zero. It's one if the statement is true, and zero if the statement is false. Now in the context of regression, we have a whole bunch of observations. And so we're going to be looking at every single one of those observations and saying, is the statement true? So in this case, xi for observation i is that the observation i is level a of this explanatory variable. And if that observation does have level a, then it will be a one, this indicator function will be a one. If it's not level a, that is it's level b, then it will be zero. And that's the way that we're going to construct a numeric quantity quantity in the context of categorical explanatory variables. Now, typically we're gonna to refer to this xi over here as a dummy variable, just so that we don't confuse it with the indicator function. Some other places you might hear this be called an indicator variable. Uh, we'll call it a dummy variable. All right, so uh, in this model, then, we want to interpret the parameters, these betas, and we're going to interpret the intercept just like before. So when the explanatory variable is zero, then beta zero is the expected response. And it turns out that that explanatory variable, that xi is going to be zero when the categorical variable has level B, that is when it's not level A, All right? So beta naught is the expected response when the categorical variable is level B. Now, here uh, is how we're gonna think about the situation when it's level A, when that categorical variable is level A. We're going to be thinking about that xi is now one. So when we plug it into the equation, we have beta naught plus beta one times one or beta naught plus beta one. And that's the expected response, which occurs when that indicator is one, which occurs when the categorical variable is level A. So we can immediately interpret these two quantities, beta naught, and beta naught plus beta one. And now if we take a difference between those two, we're going to be left with just beta naught and therefore, sorry, just left with beta one. And therefore beta one is the expected difference in the response between A and B, in particular when we take level A minus level B. All right, so that's what we're gonna be doing. And uh, we're gonna be looking at an example here uh, this example again comes from Sleuth, the uh, Statistical Sleuth and the Sleuth 3 R package that I mentioned last time. Love this book, love the examples. This particular example looks at two different diets. Those are on the X axis. So in this case, we have this, uh, what is it? The NR50 diet and the RR50 diet. So those two diets 
on the y-axis, then we have our mice lifetime. So every one of these dots is a particular mouse. Uh, they were given different diets, and it was recorded how long they lived. And so we plotted just like we did before. We have on the x-axis our explanatory variable, and on the y-axis we have our response variable. Now, uh, those are the only two diets that are possible, so the variability you see on the x-axis in the points is just due to jittering so that we can actually see all of the observations. So really all we have here are two groups, the group under the first diet and the group under the second diet. All right, so uh, in this particular example, we're going to have the regression model, but here now y is going to be the lifetime of the ith mouse uh, in months, and then we're going to construct dummy explanatory variables this way. So here we've just arbitrarily chosen nr50 to be the diet that we look at, and we have an indicator function that says that if the diet for observation i is nr50, then the explanatory variable for that observation is 1, otherwise it's 0. And now we can look at, uh, in the context of this problem, the expected lifetime under the RR50 diet, that is when that indicator is going to be 0, is just beta naught. And then we can look at the opposite situation, the expected lifetime when the diet is NR50, that's when the dummy variable is 1, and therefore we have a beta naught plus beta 1. And the difference between those two is going to be the expected lifetime difference in months between NR50 and RR50. All right, so good. So now we've got some interpretation of these parameters, just like we had in simple linear regression. Um, we can uh, calculate everything we need to in R. Now, for those who know R, there is a simpler way to do this. I'm just going to do this for illustrative purposes, and in a future video, I'll use the simpler way. So basically, we start out there by constructing our dummy variable. Then we run our regression model. Um, uh, using that dummy variable, we get whatever we want out of that regression. So in this case, I decided to uh, construct some credible intervals and to get some predictive values for the one diet that you can't get immediately from this output. Right? So immediately from the output, we have the lifetime under the uh, which is it? RR50 diet, but we don't have under the NR50 diet because we have this beta naught plus beta 1. So if you want to get the uncertainty, perhaps, for the lifetime under that diet, you can get it without having to refit the model, but just using the predict function down here, where we construct a new data set that has x equals 1, and then we just predict using that da new data set, but we use confidence here in order to construct the confidence in credible intervals. So now at the bottom we have the expected lifetime as well as a 95% credible interval for that lifetime under that diet. All right, so as a picture, this is really what we're thinking about. So instead of a line like we had with simple linear regression when the explanatory variable was continuous, instead of that line, what we have are really just two different means. One for the NR50 group and a different one for the RR50 group one corresponding to beta naught, and the other one corresponding to beta naught plus beta 1, and then the difference between those two lines corresponding to beta. All right, so in a previous video, hopefully I'll put a link up here, we talked about something called a two-sample t-test, and in particular, that uh, data, that video talked about this particular model. So we had yij here, where j indicated two different groups, and then we had the i different observations within a group. And within that model, we just had two different means, as you can see up here. There's going to be a mu0 and a mu1. And so if we want to translate that model we had before into our new regression model, we will just have mu0 is equal to beta0 and mu1 is equal to beta0 plus beta1. All right, and it, so I mentioned this just because oftentimes we have multiple different ways of writing models, and when we do, that difference is called a reparameterization. So this is just a reparameterization in the regression framework for the model that we had in a two-sample t-test. Now, just to provide some evidence that this is actually true, I performed both the regression analysis and the two-sample t-test analysis. So up on top here is the regression output, where we're just looking at the p-value uh, of the term for beta 1, that is the difference between the two diets. The x-line right there is the 
uh, confidence interval, incredible interval for that beta one term. Down below, we have the t dot test uh, way of doing things. Uh, but make sure here, in order to get equivalent results, that the argument var dot equal is set to true. The default is false. And so you'll have to have that in order to have comparable results with the regression. But what you can see here is that the p-value we got in the regression is the same as the p-value down here. The credible interval we got with the regression is the same as the credible interval listed as a confidence interval because we know it's both uh, down here. All right, so that's uh, just trying to provide some evidence that in fact these two are the same. The next video, we're going to be talking about categorical explanatory variables, but that have more than two levels. Hope to catch you there.